hope the door is open. All right. Well, this morning, uh, we are transitioning. I want to even learn how to say Focus Church instead of Cat City Kids. And so yeah. we've got to go with that. But one thing I wanted to say, I love our church. I love all of you guys' investment into this transition. Uh, on Wednesday night, we met for an amazing time, the town hall kind of style, where uh, I got to, you guys got to ask all your questions. Pastor, what are you doing? What about the finances? Man, what's going to be the same about who we are? And this is one thing that I love about Focus Church and, and who we are uh, even here currently, that we are family. And so uh, that's not going to change. We, we talked about some distinctives about who we are. It's not going to change. Hey, we're, we're going to continue to have a beautiful array of people on stage singing and worshiping Jesus. Um, we believe that church should look like heaven. And so I'm glad that that's who we are and who we will continue to be. So let's continue to be in unity. Again, if you have any questions, email me, text me, call me. I'll answer it if you call me the second time. If you go to the voicemail, it's because I'm doing not to start. So call me a second time, and I'll answer it. You guys know how that goes. But uh, you can get a hold of me. Rachel and I are going to travel to Dallas. And uh, tonight, actually, we leave for Dallas. And then we'll be there through Wednesday. We're going with, with Ryan and Shalee. And we're going to learn a whole bunch of more stuff about this whole two, one church, two church multiplying thing. It's, uh, it's called the Church Multiplication Network. And so it's a really good time for us to continue to learn what God is doing. Friday morning, I got to meet with a lawyer for the first time for a personal issue related to us becoming one church. So I got to do a whole bunch of legal stuff too, write official language in papers and things of that nature. And so um, pray for me, pray for Ryan. Uh, official things, you know, take time to learn to do. So there'll be a process in this. I do have a letter today from Ryan and Shalee. They wanted to be here uh, via video, and they said, you know what, our words are going to be important. So uh, this morning I want to share with you, this is, what, this is what Ryan wrote us. He said, hey there, Cap City Church. We are excited for what can only be described as a God thing. The coming together of two churches for the purpose of reaching more in our area for Jesus. Thank you for your unanimous vote of affirmation last week as we move forward in becoming one church in two locations. Your unity is expiring. It is inspiring. Ex expiring. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting stronger, isn't it? Your unity is inspiring and will be needed further as we take the next steps in the coming weeks and months to officially become Focus Church West Madison. Shalee and I can't wait to meet you all. We love your pastors, Andrew and Rachel, and look forward to getting to spend time the next few days with them in Texas as we attend a conference designed for churches who are doing just this. We believe the best God stories start with the phrase, this doesn't normally happen, but. And this definitely is what fits the story that God is writing here. What is happening here as we become one church in two locations? Together, we can help the people of West Madison reach their next level with God. Please join me in praying daily for our leaders, pastors, and churches as we step out in faith and follow God on this adventure. We'll see you soon, Pastor Ryan and Shelley. So we wanted to send these words of greeting to you guys, encouraging us to continue to take these steps together, because as God has started this thing, we have to believe that God will finish it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, this morning we're going to be uh, looking at a message, uh, message series, starting a message series called Focused. Um, I believe that I've searched, everybody is focused on something. You guys may have seen this in your life. Some people are focused on family, career, education here in Madison, without a doubt. But today we want to look at what is God focused on? What is his intent on? What is his eyes on? How, what does he see? What is his purpose behind everything that he does? I want to encourage you, if you came today looking for hope or peace or purpose or focus in your life, there's good news. There is hope found in Jesus. Can we agree on that this morning? 
And today at the end of the message, we'll give you a chance to respond to the message of hope and to receive Jesus and all that he has for you. Today, let's turn to our Bibles, Matthew chapter 9, and we're going to look at verse 35 through 38 this morning. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 through 38. And it reads this way, it says, Jesus traveled through all the towns and the villages of that area, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great. Anybody else believe that this morning? Okay. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest and ask him to send more workers into the field. Let's pray this morning. Father, I am so grateful for who you are. God, that you loved us even when we were afar off. Thank you, God, that you made us your main focus. God, I pray that today as we receive your word, Lord, that we would also receive your heart for the lost. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, on Wednesday night, one of, the, one of the cool moments for me was at the very end, I, I asked, you know, one more question. Who, who has a one more question? And little Joshua raised his hand. I don't know. I, I text message Rajiv and Hesla. I said, I don't know if they planted it or not, but I was super proud of Joshua that he raised his hand. He's a, he's a little little kid. I won't make age five. Okay, I was going to say four. So five, so that's, that's pretty close. So he was five years old. And uh, he raised his hand and said, Pastor, why are we changing our name? I kind of like, like, I kind of like Cap City Church. <laughs> and so I, I had this cool moment. I could bring him up, and I, I had him sit on my lap, you know, and I had my, my neon green notebook with me. So I pulled a neon, neon green notebook out, and I, and I said, hey, hey, Joshua, if you were to, if you were to look at this book and you were to focus at it really closely, would you be able to see anything else? And he kind of answered, like, I don't even know what to talk about, Pastor. So I tried to break it down a little bit more, right? But what I, what I, was, what I was trying to illustrate with, with Josh was, right, if you, if you keep your focus on one thing, if you're not focusing on it, if you're looking at it, something different, right? I, I do this with, with Denver sometimes. Denver, he grabbed his hand. All right, look at me in the eyes. We're going to talk through this thing. And then... A minute in, I said, I said, Devin, just a second. Look at me for a moment. Let's, let's finish this. All right. Go on to right. We, we, we have to have a focus. And, and I believe that, that if we have a focus, if we go after this focus, we will accomplish the things that we focus on. And so I would explain to Joshua that part of the reason why we're changing our name from, from Cap City Church to Focus Church is because we want to be about one main thing. And it's helping <coughs> people find Jesus. Today we're going to look at how God demonstrates that main focus. I believe, you know, not many things are accomplished by accident. You guys agree with that? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I've never had my bed made by accident. <laughs> it doesn't happen. I've never, I've never had a college paper accidentally get written and turned in on time. It took some focus, it took some intentionality, it took some purpose, it took some planning, right? Sure. I've never had my car accidentally show up at the office. I, mean, I, have, I don't have a self-driving car yet, so maybe that could happen in the future where I accidentally, oh, by end of it, I ended up at the office instead of where I intended to go. But I, I've never had, uh, I've never, I've never accidentally gotten into shape. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I accidentally get out of shape. <laughs> I didn't intend for that to happen when I ate that Goldberg burger, but, right? If it's worth accomplishing, it will take focus, determination to fulfill what God has for us. Right? Things don't just happen on accident. They happen with a 
focus, and we're going to be laser focused, just as God was laser focused on helping people find freedom, find Jesus, find hope, find a family in Him, be redeemed, be set free, be forgiven. Everything about God, our relationship with Him, all of it can be summed up in this one thing. God loves people. God is crazy about people. God is crazy about you. I don't know if you know that. God is crazy about you. He wants your best. And that's what this is all about. In John chapter 3, verse 16, come on, we can, we can repeat to some of us, right? We've been hearing this since we were in Sunday school as a little kid, right? But John 3, 16 is God's main focus. He loves people. I know you guys love people too, but I want to convince you, I want you to be sold, I want you to receive this deep down in, in who you are, that God loves people. John 3, 16, for this is how God loved the world that he gave his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. This is God's main Focus. This is his purpose in sending his son. This is why we exist as a church. This is why we're not in heaven yet. Do you guys know that? Right. We're going to learn about that. The reason why we're not in heaven yet because there's a mission. There's a purpose that God has for every individual, every soul, all 800 billion of us, the God, 8 billion of us. God has a purpose for us. He loves us and he sent his son. God wants lost people to be saved. And I don't know if you guys know this, I mean, you guys have been around me for a while. I want unbelievers, I want lost people to be saved. I want them to be found. There is misery without God. Can anybody agree? Without God, there's hopelessness, there's nothing. I mean, there's no purpose, there's no nothing. I'm thoroughly convinced of this. The life of Jesus was an example of God's focus. Jesus explained his purpose, his mission, his focus to his disciples in Luke chapter 19, in verse 10. Some of you guys are already smiling. You guys, know, you guys know what it says. It says this, the Son of Man, Jesus, he came to find lost people and save them. That's his fault. That's his intention. That's his purpose. That was his mission. When he went to bed at night, when he woke up the next morning, when he was walking with his disciples, when he was praying, he was thinking about how can we save them? How can we find lost people? What can we do? Man, the healing manifestation, all the things he does, showing them who the Father is. Why? Because he had a purpose. He had a focus. He came so that lost people could be found. He came to save the world. Jesus didn't hang out with people that everybody thought he should. I know we were going through, Austin just came up to me right before the sermon. He said, Pastor, are we still doing the upside down kingdom of messages? I said, I said, no, we're changing our message series today. I know some of you guys shed a tear. We were in the book of Matthew for a year and a half. <laughs> And we only went through one and a half chapters. <laughs> <laughs> study, study the Sermon on the Mount. It's good stuff. Jesus was, was, was turning everything upside down. He was changing everything. He was cutting people to the heart. He was changing lives, right? And it's, it was, that was a lot. Continue reading it. It's good stuff. Continue meditating on it. I believe, right? The same Holy Spirit's in me as in you guys. He can reveal the truth to you. Keep on reading and keep on studying it. But in the Sermon on the Mount, we were learning, right? Jesus didn't hang out with people that everybody thought he should be hanging out with. Right? All the religious people, they thought we, they would be buddy-buddy with the new king that was coming in, right? They, that they, they would be partners with them. That, man, if anybody was doing it right, they, they had it right. But Jesus wasn't, Jesus wasn't hanging out with them. Anything he was correcting them, cutting them to the heart, changing what they thought, turning turning everything they thought about following God upside down. But this is what Jesus came to do, right? He knew that it was not the healthy people who needed to see a doctor, but rather the sick. 
man, if, Jean, if Jesus were to visit Madison today, you know, I, I used to think about this when I was in church. I was like, yeah, what if, what if Jesus shows up and he, like, walks in the room? Man, we would all be, like, worshiping him, like, hand in the mic. Man, 10-hour sermon, just Jesus, just, just speak to us. But you know what? I don't know if Jesus would ever visit us if he were to be here in Madison today. You know who we would be hanging out with? He said he hung out with the outcasts, with the sinners. And he, he hung out with the people that were unhealthy. He, he hung out with the broken. He, he hung out with people who needed him. They're lost. Man, he had a totally different purpose. He had a greater drive. He had a completely different focus. It wasn't about how many people could I gather, how many people would like me, how many people could I get to hang out, not how many worship songs we did, not how long we prayed. No, it was, I want to hang out with some people that need to hear some hope. I want to hang out with some people that are broken and need to be restored. I, I want to hang out with some people who are sick because I'm going to point them to the one that is going to re totally change their lives. Jesus had one main focus to seek and save the lost. To find lost people. Lost people matter to God. Though they should also matter to us. It should change how we live. It should change how we think about things. It should change where we live. I'm just get on my little soapbox for all that, right? Sometimes we pick location to, to live out of our safety and our needs being met. And I want to just challenge you guys with that. Jesus went to places that weren't safe, weren't ordinary, where people thought oddly of him being there for the purpose of making sure lost people had hope. Had an opportunity, I may have an opportunity, to move into a house in a location in Madison that nobody really wants to live. Somebody offered us a place. And we're considering it, not because we have the finances to do it at all. But it's smack dab in the middle of a place in Madison that nobody wants to be. What would it look like if we were to truly be focused? Of the lost. It would change every priority of our lives. I have two stories of being lost. Anybody been lost before? Yes. My first story was I was about Denver's age, about seven, seven to nine years old. I'm not a date keeper, you guys know that. I kind of get the exact name, sort of that range, but. Early elementary school, uh, we lived in Southern California in San Diego and had an opportunity to go to Disney World. Anybody been to the theme park before? Crazy, lots of people. And so we were we were at the ride and and on the this Aladdin ride. And I was an Aladdin fan when I was a kid. One of my favorite movies, you know, going to flying carpet, genie that could do anything I wanted. I mean, that sounded good. But we were on the ride on Aladdin, and then I thought I saw my dad in this huge crowd of people in Southern California, so I was following after him, and then shortly after I realized that wasn't dad. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm in the middle of the park with all the people around me. But uh, when I was a kid, I really liked uh, the thought of being lost. I, I thought, like, um, in, in, in Southern California, we have a lot of, like, uh, kidnappings and things like that, so I would plan out, you know, if I would ever get lost or if I would ever get kidnapped, like, how was I going to solve this uh, situation? So that day in the park, I was like, oh, the last ride that we talked about as a family was this. And so, if you're, you know, all the kids are downstairs. When you're lost, what are you supposed to do? It's a stay in that place, right? It is, don't move, okay, you know. But I was like, all right, we talked about this ride at this location in the park. So I figured out on the map, okay, here's where my parents are. And I went and I found my parents and, and I ended up being found. But the real scary time when I got lost, I was with Rachel. And when we were in Chicago. <laughs> yeah, you remember that one. We were, we were in Chicago. It was about 9 o'clock at night. 
we were headed towards our hotel, yeah. and um, we were following the GPS. And it was before we had really like the cell phone, like iPhones, we had like the GPS, you know, just like the navigator system. And it was telling us, all right, take this exit. We're like, okay, we'll take this exit. All right, take this turn. Okay, I'll take this turn. Then we get to this turn. And I said, I don't think <laughs> we're supposed to be in this area. And it was a stop sign like every block, you know, and I'm stopping and I'm like, oh, I know what they're doing on that street corner. I'm like, okay, let's just roll through these, you know, I had our <laughs> Chinese friend in, our, in the back seat, uh, and, and as we went through a couple more stops, I was like, all right, if you just, can you lock your doors? And if you lock our door, would it, you know, go and I, and I, I didn't have a cell phone, so I called up dad, dad, can you look on a map? Like, because if you had to be on MapQuest on, online, you know, before even Google Maps was a big thing, and he was like, yeah, what street are you on? I'm like, this street and this street, and he said, okay, son, just keep on going. You're going to get to your destination, just keep on going. Being lost ain't no fun. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when you're in places you don't want to be. <laughs> you know you ain't supposed to be. <laughs> we, got to the, we got to the hotel at the night, and I said, I'm just going to look up, like, where were, where were we? I said, oh, yeah, there's lots of reports here. Yeah, I shouldn't be in that. I shouldn't be in that place. We should. We should. Thank you for correcting me. I should be. We should be in that place. Be in that at 9 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know how to use wisdom. You guys know this, right? Sorry, I was just totally, I wasn't even expecting to say all this. So you guys know, uh, as a kid, Dad and I, we used to do um, street ministry in Southern California, San Diego, in, in neighborhoods that, yeah, we shouldn't be there, but Jesus said, hey, go, so we, so we went. So I'm not saying, I, I just know, we also know how to use wisdom, or I tend to, you know how to use wisdom, so that's all I'm saying, okay. But, if you're lost, all that to say, if you're lost, you sure want to be found. I was really happy when Dad came on the phone, he's like, yeah, son, your hotel's like four blocks away. It's okay. I'm laughing myself sometimes. When you're lost, you want to be found. You want to get to your destination. You want to find your family. Man, you call up anybody. You search anyway. I want to get out of this situation. This morning, if you don't get anything else I said previously, forget about some of that weird, weird stuff I just said. Remember this. It takes people to find people. God knew this because he knew he had to become Jesus. He had to become God in the flesh and come down. He, he knew he couldn't accomplish his main focus sitting on his throne. He couldn't accomplish his main focus without coming in flesh, moving into the neighborhood, and starting to find lost people. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 37 to 38, we read this earlier. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest. And don't ask them, God, do a miracle and just save everybody. Is that, what he, that was the end of that? He, he didn't say, oh God, let's, let's build this build an amazing church and just, and just, just you know, have everybody come. Just, just call from a distance. Hey everybody, come find hope. No, he said, pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest and ask them to send more workers into his field. And you know who those more workers are here in Madison? Yeah. 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 Who's, the, who's the people over in Milwaukee? It's you guys. It's you guys. So we're praying this prayer. We're praying, God, send workers into the harvest field. God, find lost people. Lord, do your work. And you know what the Lord is saying? Go do something about it. Go do something about it. Go be about the Father's focus. Go be about the Father's business. He's all about helping lost people get found. God wants to accomplish His purpose through each and every one of you. Not just me, because I got a mic on Sunday mornings. No, every single one of you, He is crazy about finding lost people. And He said, you know what? You, 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 go help find lost people. Man, Friday night I had an amazing time. We went down to West Lafayette, New University. Uh, 
Rachel and I were, were missionaries there for a while, and we got to serve under this amazing woman of God. Her name is Linda Seiler. I told her already, you have to come to Madison. We're arranging it. We're talking it through. So, man, we got to celebrate 13 years of this woman of God faithfully serving at Purdue. We had, a, we had alumni come from all 13 years, and we spent two-plus hours sharing one-minute testimonies what Linda meant to us, the changes that she made in our life. And she, she was like, she tells the story this way, uh, she was praying about what university to go to, what to, where to start the ministry, and she really liked the idea of going to Duke, because she said, you know, if I go to Duke, I can play golf all year round. And she was like, you know, that, that's definitely where God wants me to be, right? And God said no, and opened this door for her to go to Purdue. This cold city in the middle of cornfield there's nothing and if you've ever been to west lafayette there's nothing it's just cornfield and flat and then boom there's this forty thousand students in the middle of the cornfield and god said nope i want to send you there and you're going to build a ministry that's going to impact the nations for jesus and she said okay and she i mean carried the ministry her body had been broken she's the devil been and beating her up but man, she's been faithful to say, you know what? There's lots of people here. I'm going to go to Purdue when I wanted to go golf. Uh, I wanted to be in a better place. And I want to go against what the enemy has said. Man, the enemy at, at that time was saying that there's no ministries. There, there's no powerful ministries in all of Indiana. Everything's terrible. There's terrible reports. There's 150 different nations represented there. There's, all, just, just, there's things that are against it. They said, you know what? No. I want to go. And I want to be faithful to make finding lost people my main focus. And we've celebrated thousands of lives that have been transformed by one person's obedience. To say, yes, God, I'm willing to go. There's a story in the Bible, a whole book on this story, the story of Jonah. And God knew there was the city of Nineveh who is known for their wickedness. They are known for torturing people. They are known for being the people who are evil. And God came to Jonah and he said to Jonah, Jonah, I want you to go be my my purpose extended, my focus extended. I want you to go to the city of Nineveh and preach repentance. Preach, come to Jesus. Come, turn from your wicked ways and come to God. See, God's main focus is finding lost people. Jesus' main focus was finding lost people. And God is calling us also to be a people who make finding lost people our main focus. Oftentimes, our response to God's promptings reflect how much our hearts align with His heart. See, we're all fans of change. We're all, we're all rejoicing <coughs> things that will be different, right? And, until it affects us. Like, like today's service. You know, we did a little, little different order of service. And you guys are handling it pretty well. I think I got to handle it really well, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, we totally will see how our heart aligns with his heart when we're asked to do something different and where our attitude lies. Because Jonah here knew the people of Nineveh. And he's like, you know what? It might be a good thing that they get destroyed. That they get what, they, the, the, what lies ahead of them. And, and what did Jonah do? We know the story of Jonah. God told him to go to Nineveh. And he said, you know what? I'm jumping on the ship. I'm going the complete opposite direction. Right? He, 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 had, a pretty, he had a pretty bad heart. He had, he, it, it was a reflection that his attitude, his heart, was not in line with God's heart because God wanted to bring hope. God wanted to bring restoration. But sometimes it's tough to do what we know we should do. I got told on our last board meeting that I still sometimes have a hard time keeping up close. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to know, I've been, I've been very intentional and focused. 
and have picked up all the, all the board members are laughing because they were all there. Sometimes it's tough to do what you know you should do. But you've got to change your focus sometimes. You've got to be intentional sometimes. You've got to say, you know what, I'm willing to align who I am with who God is. And I'm willing to do something. And that's what, that's what these steps of obedience is all about. Sometimes our initial response to God's promptings really stink. They show our heart. They show who we are. And you know what? I'm grateful that God is a God of second chances. Not only for those who need to receive Him as Savior, but to each one of us that are shooting for complete obedience to God. Jonah had a second chance in his story. Jonah gets swallowed by a whale to find out, man, Jonah, you're why this storm is, is after us. You're why we're having such a rough time on these seas. This storm came up. He's out there with these, these other, other guys in the, on the sea, right? It's crazy. And they're trying to figure out, you know, what's cursed us? What's going on? And Jonah's like, oh, yeah, sorry. Actually, uh, I serve the God Yahweh, and I'm in disobedience to him right now. And so they say, all right, how are we going to stop the storm? And they get get off the boat. He gets swallowed by a whale, spit up on the sea. Finally, he realizes, you know what? It's probably a better thing to be obedient to God than to go the other way. There's probably, there's probably, there's probably going to be easier. There's going to be some blessings in my life rather than a curse. If I'm going to do what God originally told me to do. When we do what God asks us, His purposes will prevail. We will see God-sized results. This decision to become one church in two locations is not just about, you know, strengthening and leadership and strategies. No, it is about more people finding Jesus. I mean, we are totally aware that in Dane County, it seems to be, there's reports out there that it is impossible to reach our city for Jesus. That we can't grow a church here. That, that pastors come here and they die. That ministries come here and fail. Some of you guys don't know this. You guys go all the way over there and walk. I mean, like, like when I became pastor of Cap City Church, people would congratulate me. They went, we went to district council and said, congratulations, you're the new pastor in Madison. Their next line was, I would never pastor in Madison. That's a crazy place. That's, that's such a liberal place. Man, there's a whole bunch of sinners there. I'm like, oh. Why don't you come join me? Like, I need some help. Like, come on down to Madison. Come on over to Madison. We need some help. There's some people in Madison who are lost. This year, I shared with the board, I think I shared with you guys last week, Madison ranked number nine in all of America as least church cities. Number nine. 54% of Dane County doesn't know Jesus and are moving further away from him. Yeah. There's a lot of people here to be on mission for us. There's a lot of people here that we can say, I want to help you find Jesus. It's going to take us changing our habits, changing who we are, aligning our priorities with who God is so that more people can find Jesus. Here's what I do know. That God loves the lost people in this area, and He wants us to join Him in His focused mission. To be the more workers that are sent into His feet. You see, if we do our part, I'm confident that God will do His part. Jonah, he went to the city of Nineveh. And if you look, if you go, go back and read the, the story of Jonah, he doesn't preach this like amazing 10 point message that went on for an hour and all the city cried. And, and he just said one sentence. <coughs> it's like, God, I just want you to know God's wrath is coming. You need to repent. That's all. Come on, it's probably still, it's probably still has some hard things you need to change. Maybe some of you guys are in that boat. But you know what happened? The whole city. The whole city, the whole city was transformed. 
the whole city changed their future. Because one individual decided to obey God is better than a lot of people are found. Jesus will accomplish his purposes, his focus, through our obedience. It is by taking action that we will see God's side results. It's by moving together toward a unified purpose, towards one focus, that we will see God do something miraculous. We've got to do something in order to see these God's side results. Remember, here's God's part. John chapter 3, verse 16. You don't have to go to theological seminary. You don't got to go to a Bible college to learn this. God loved the world. And he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Maybe it's time that we also join in with this God focus, with this God with with this God alignment, so that we can see the city of Madison, Stane County area, transformed by the good news of Jesus. God loved Madison, Sun Prairie, Dane County so much that he sent Focus Church, one church in two locations, to find lost people and to save them. Father, I thank you for your message this morning. God, I am grateful, Lord, that you have sent us here for such a time as this to focus on lost people being found. Lord, I pray that every individual here, God, would, would receive from you your heart, your vision, your purpose, your focus. And Lord, that we too will decide to do something about the lostness of our city and our county. God, that you would receive honor by seeing many more people come to Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.